So we've finally had some rain and I think the amount of rain that's fallen on the growing space of my plot and Debbie's plot is about the equivalent of 10 IBC tanks, so 10 cubic metres of water just on the growing space. And it makes you realise that there's just no way that you can store up enough water to see you through, uh, you know, weeks and weeks of drought, um, which we'd had before. And now, you know, the ground is all beautifully hydrated. It's lovely and crumbly um, rather than doing dry dust. And it's the time to get planting again. And I so love planting. I'm not such a fan really of sowing seeds and raising seedlings. I like to plant and I like to harvest. Those are, the, those are the two things in gardening that I really like the most. I suppose I like to potter around and chat to people. But um, yeah, so I've done quite a bit already and I'll just show you quickly around what I've done. And today I'm gonna to get on and put a lot of brassicas in. So I'll just quickly show you the uh, planting that I've been doing and the planting that I'm going to be doing later on today. So start off with underneath this little mesh cover at the moment because I've got cabbages in here. Um, I put parsnips in here and I've also put onions in here. So I've interplanted basically. So the parsnips are just in the centres of those onions. So the theory is that when the onions come out in August time, um, the uh, parsnips will be pretty big by then and they'll just take over the space that the onions vacate. But for most of the life of the onions, the parsnips will be pretty small and as a result, they won't get in the way of each other. So that's the theory. I looked back at my videos from last year and I think that timing is going to work and I've done this all over the place. So all my parsnips have been done like that and the onions are a bonus crop. So I've taken the top off this bed of strawberries and garlic because the garlic's got to the top now. And to be honest, the strawberries don't really need the protection now because I don't want them to come too early because they're a follow on crop from the ones in the polytunnel and they're doing great at the moment and in fact they're just starting to colour up now so it won't be very long before these are all ready and so these should last they normally last about four weeks or so but that's when I want these to be ready and they're just starting to come into flower now so I think uh, that timing should work pretty well there are a few that got slightly damaged by the frost but generally speaking they're fine. So these spinach beds have really served me well. I think I've taken now 22 harvests off these beds and these will start to go to seed pretty soon. Now this bed's going to be peppers uh, in late May. But I'll just see if I can just get a crop of radish off them uh, and turnips before I do that. Now obviously some of those won't all be harvested, but I'll just interplant the spinach into this, no, I'll just interplant the peppers into this bed um, in the gaps between the, uh, the turnips and the radish. So we'll see how that goes. And this is a bed where I haven't done uh, a second interplant because all these were a second interplant. So I've already taken a crop of radish out of this bed as well as all the spinach. But uh, this one, it's just turnips and they're all ready now. So these are the three biggest beds that I've got on my plot and that's currently got the purple sprouting broccoli, some broad beans, more purple sprouting broccoli and then underplanted under there is spinach, underplanted in there are field beans for the leaves and this bed was spinach over winter interplanted with field beans and the field beans did pretty well but the spinach didn't so whereas the spinach that I just showed you has had 22 harvests off it this spinach has only managed to get two harvests off it so that's the difference that uh, growing under cover makes and then these are my main crop onions I've got a few more beds of these 
but uh, let's just take a peek under there so they're all looking really nice now so these are grown from seed at this end and then right at the other end down there those are grown from sets and they're basically the same planting density I think in this bed I think it worked out something like 90 onions per square meter um, for both the sets and for the ones grown from seed and I'm just going to do an experiment to see what the different sort of yield is from the two approaches so this bed is going to be collets interplanted with leeks and I like that interplanting because both of them are a winter crop both of them can be left pretty much undisturbed until winter I'm only putting them under this net initially because it provides a decent amount of protection from the wind and that's what these are going to need they don't need protection from the cold but they do need a bit of protection from the wind for the first uh, few weeks when they reach the top of this net then I'll just raise these stakes up a bit uh, double the height of them probably and then I'll put just butterfly netting over them and I've tried Enviromesh and I'm to be honest I've not had a great experience with it I find that I often get insects trapped under the Enviromesh and I can't see what's happening and as a result I get more problems doing it that way than with butterfly netting where I can see through it really clearly and see any problems with cabbage aphid or white fly or anything like that that I need to deal with so or any trap butterflies inside as well so uh, that's the approach that I'm going to take this year I think observation seems to be a more successful strategy than uh, trying to keep the insects out so I like planting my brassicas or pretty much everything really using a dibber but when you're planting big plants it's much better to use a corer and so this is a bulb planter and it's just really useful um, this one I think is from Spear and Jackson and it's pretty good I'll put a link to it in the description so I'll just talk a little bit about how I prepared this bed so over winter we had field beans in and bacteria on the roots of the field bean plant fix nitrogen into these little tiny nodules and those nodules then release that nitrogen for uh, during the growing season so that's just a natural way of getting a bit of extra nitrogen in the ground but um, those roots are quite a bit higher up in the soil level um, than the roots of the collets are going to be so I am going to put just a pinch of hoof and horn in each of the holes just to give them some slow release nitrogen right down in the root zone uh, what I've also done is I've just put a handful of lime on here I do that every three years um, a handful per square meter rather and I've also put a handful of poultry manure that's composted with seaweed on here as well so it's quite a nutritious bed and then I've mulched it with one inch one and a half inches of spent mushroom compost and that fluffs up really nicely um, and provides a nice water retentive mulch it does rot down gradually but um, you know I don't think there's enough nutri nutrition just in mushroom compost to grow collects the way I want to grow them and that is really big plants with really big stems and that's kind of essential to getting a really big harvest and a big harvest is important to us because collets are by far probably the most important brassica that we grow we start harvesting the leaves when we take the nets off in July we harvest the leaves all the way through until maybe December time something like that uh, which time the leaf quality kind of degrades a little bit then we'll top the plants and take the tops off and that's like a little cabbage um, and then we'll eat the actual flower sprouts on the stems uh, we'll leave any little tiny ones on there though um, and then we tend to get a second flush of those flower sprouts 
later on in early spring and then in about now we're taking loads of leaves again off the plants so uh, they're just an incredible source of food all the way through as I say from July until we'll probably take them up uh, in a week's time so about the middle of May so July to the middle of May from a single plant it's really quite amazing but they do need really well prepared ground to grow big like that and you really need them big. So I do water the plant in holes with this fish mix from Biobiz and I did a little bit of an experiment with that and I'll show you that later on. Um, so I pre-water the holes uh, just to make sure or to not make sure but perhaps to encourage the uh, roots to go down nice and deep. So I generally prepare all my brassicas in the same way that I've just done those collets. And let's just take a look at these. So this is one of my early kale beds. And as you can see, the plants are looking really lovely. Uh, this is Dazzling Blue, it's one of my favorites. And I think these are Carvalho Nero. And then these are Black Magic here. Just look at those leaves absolutely gorgeous and I've interplanted these with beetroot and of course mare's tail now once I've planted I also water in with this nemesis fruit and veg protection nematode and this is a protection against cutworm and cabbage root fly which affects all the brassicas um, and those are the biggest pests that I have and it's also good against onion fly and carrot root fly and I've got a lot of onions and I've got a lot of carrots so I'm going to water basically this into all of those different things so the brassicas the onions the carrots and hopefully that will uh, protect them it's a bit expensive but when you grow a lot like we do it works out I think it's about 1% of harvest value something like that so it's not a lot of cost for me so there's the plants I'm going to put in and you do need to check them all for anything on the leaves any caterpillars or eggs or anything like that because once under those nets you're not going to see them. So check first. Now this batch of clets was sown middle of March 13th, batch 152 and I really like middle of March for almost all of my main crop um, leafy greens. And that's partly because I don't um, like to pot them on. Now I'll just need a tiny bit of clean up, not very much, just these lower leaves taking off. And those look really good to me. Roots are fine, don't look particularly pot bound, so they're going to be good. Now those are the holes that they're going in. And you can see that's a bit too deep, but uh, it's not far off, so I'll just backfill with a little bit of compost. So that's how I planted them right up to the leaves here and sometimes even slightly below the soil surface if there wasn't much of a stem because I want to get them down as deep as I can. Um, and I've pressed them in really well with my hands, so I'm out of breath. Um, and yeah, so they're nice and firm but they will be supported by these fence pins. So once the nets come off in July, we take the fence pins from the onion bed and the rest of this brassica bed, and we put the fence pins in to support them because it really makes a big difference, I think, to the health of the plants later on when they're really big 
if they're still standing up right. So now I'm on to what I think of as the fun bit, trying to squeeze in all these interplants. So I'm going to put some chef's white leek and some blue solaris, I think, leek. I think I've got, I don't know, something like 128 leeks there. So when I'm making the holes for these, I want to go quite deep down. <laughs> A bit difficult one-handed, actually. As deep as you can go, so at least this sort of depth. So that's about five inches down, something like that. Now you could go deeper, but I don't. I want don't want the leaks that deep because it's a real difficult job getting them out when you do that. You do get a nice white shank, but I don't want to be disrupting the uh, collet plants too much. The modules are quite big, so I need to round these holes out a bit as well. So I'm absolutely thrilled with that. I can't remember how many leaks I got in here. I'll count up and put it as an overlay on the video, but there was a lot. And I'm not that confident that the ones in between the plants will get enough light. So these will probably, I put some leaks in those places so I can harvest those nice and early. Uh, all the ones around the edge and down the centre, they should be fine. Although they will not be show bench leaks. They do tend to get a bit bashed up and knocked over a little bit, squashed, whatever, by the collets, but they're perfectly good in soups or steam, chopped up and steamed or whatever. So it matters not one jot that uh, they get a little bit um, of damage from the collets because the collets do grow into really big plants. So I should say as well, I'm a big fan of diversification. So we've got three different varieties of leeks in here. I've got three different planting locations for my leeks. This is the main bed though. And same for the kale, the collets. So I'll have the collets in three different locations um, and three different planting dates. When you're self-sufficient, it pays to do this because you can always guarantee that you're gonna get a harvest when you diversify to that extent. Also the, the um, collets, the seed packet actually comes I think with three different varieties of collets in it so you get a nice successional harvest from them. So if you want to see more about how I make my nets, the frames for my nets, then if you take a look in my gardening book, there's a link in the description below, go into the basic section, growing under cover, and then just scroll down and jump to the section on mesh. And there's links in there to some other videos where I show how I make the frames and links to the fence pins and the eye savers, the type of fleece I'm using, where I get the spring clips from and all of that sort of thing. So I always build my nets the same way from the same component parts. Basically, it's a fence pin and a cable tie and an eye saver and an old bamboo cane. And I just run along like this. Hardly use any cable ties. You could use reusable cable ties. But these are the ones I have. All done. So if you want more on growing collets, then I'm back to recommending my book again and you want to go into the individual growing guides and scroll down to collects and there's a pretty comprehensive growing guide for collets here and obviously I'm not going to go through it all now but there's all the details of why to grow collets and how to sow them where I get my seeds from all of that sort of thing sowing pricking out planting Lots of stuff on harvesting, watering, etc, etc. So plenty of stuff there for you. So I hope you like this quick video. My name is Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.